Welcome back. I've uh, got the camera out, put it on the tripod, and then forgot to record anything. So I'll show you what I've been up to. Been, I've raised this whole bit up here, filled that so now it meets the clam because there was a gap. And this swage line was sitting slightly low of the line on the door and obviously it needs to meet it. So by raising that, I was able to raise the front edge and just uh, got some filler in there. Still, still going off. Around the front, the bonnet's off. Jonathan's just looking at brackets and whatnot for the front bumper. And we're, we've also been working out what we're gonna do with the headlights, how the headlights are gonna fit into the bonnet. So we've got the bonnet set upside down at the minute because I've got these bits to do here. spot there so I've ground it down filled over the top of it there's a low spot there so I've glopped a load of glop in there I just went right round the edge reason being although like some of it was all right it's easier if you've got like something to rub and you know to get that that edge so rather than messing on trying to shape up the fiberglass I've created like a filler edge so so I've got something to rub because fiberglass doesn't rub very well so I'm going to head over here and show you what Jonathan's up to. It's top secret. What are you doing? Um, measuring the positions of the hinges, basically. To make, a, to make a new bar. So this is the bar that came with the kit. It was just a bit of angle iron that was bent into shape. And then you get like two metal plates that you drill your own holes in. You bolt that to to the frame and um, that's what you're supposed to use to make your hinges but we're gonna make this bar as part of the kit as well only it'll have the brackets and the holes already positioned so what he's done is he's used as a camera in the top of the laser so that's Photograph the piece. So he's now he's done the positions of the holes and an outline. So I can click on a circle and then I can move the laser to it, but the the Y is not quite right because the lid's moved since it was calibrated, but it moves it's pretty close. Yeah. It's just the Y is not not right there. Um, so I could do with recalibrating the, uh, the camera just to check it better. Uh, but if I go to that one, which is that one's sitting at an angle as well, isn't it? Opposite in, it's, sitting at an angle. it's like sitting at an angle. Uh, like don't look at the plate. It's the holes that I'm interested in. Yeah. So anyway, this means that we'll be able to recreate the the whole bracket and the hinge mounts essentially you've turned it into CAD haven't you? Yeah, it's, it looks it's slightly off there so I'm going to have to just re-tweak things but basically the, I've put these marker dots on so, so the they hinges. line up with the hinges yeah. in roughly the position they were um, and the same with that end so I'm going to just double check that and then cut it out of Perspex as a template. Because these took a bit of working out and we ended up drilling all over the yeah, place eventually. Not. And we, 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 because the bumper, sorry, the bonnet wasn't Lots square, we were having all sorts of problems with that, weren't we? So yeah. now, uh, ev even if like these holes have to be slightly elongated for, you know, a minor tweak, <clears throat> they're roughly going to be... Yeah. Correct. Well, if I, if I do a Perspex one, I've got enough Perspex to do a test and then tweak it because I'll know how much right out it is, you know. Because yeah, I've I've done this line all the way around, so that gives us some way to. And we've just had some soup. 
because Uncle John brought some, le- was it ham and lentil? Aye. Wow, it was delicious. Cheese rolls. Hey, there's plenty. There's full flask tag with a big pan like that. We'll be there though. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, coming up. All right, while you weren't looking, I've sanded that swage line there. Just about sorted, just a couple of little edgy bits to do. I've got the bonnet filled and done the underside. And now I've just got to rub this front edge or the leading edge right the way around. <laughs> trying to work out how that's the top of the bumper that's the bottom of the bumper we need to build up because we've lowered the sills like 70 mil so I need to lower the bottom of the bumper as well otherwise it's gonna be you know like sitting really high on the car I'm gonna make some other changes to it as well I'm just trying to work out how I can extend the bottom of the bumper so what we've got here we've got the back bumper front bumpers there um, but this is the back bumper of the S13 so what we're looking at doing is using this section here I've marked it a hundred mil down and what we're looking at doing is cutting this off there morphing it to the bottom of there and that'll give us well, it won't actually give us 100 mil because it would go from there but that gives us a hell of a lot more build and it brings it out as well so it gives it a, a nice chin because one of the things that i don't like about this front bumper is the whole thing's very flat fronted i want to bring out some some profile to it so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to cut that off there and then we can sort of dummy fit that on and see what it looks like if anybody wants a s13 rear bumper you ain't getting this one bumper off the S13 it needs to move a little bit to there but you can see there the extra profile that gives the bottom I really like this we just need to get it to sit on better because it's uh, it really doesn't want to sit on there at the minute it's, it's under a lot of pressure so it's like twisting around like that i think if we get that mounted there we'll be pretty damn damn close and it's created a really nice shape so now we need to work out how to get that on what about if we 
instead of doing this bit down here for now what what about if we just made a bracket from there to there just to just to hold it there and then once it's held there i can glass it in the back of it and it should be sitting pretty close mm. i think that's what i'll do screw it to there yeah and then get it in position and drill it and yeah click on it i'll screw it right so what i've done is i've built up the front edge of that bumper with some fiber fill because that that section there was in that direction and it was forcing uh, uh, like this lip here is that direction so it was opposite and it was forcing it to go down so what I've done is I've built that up with fiberglass resin at an angle and that should give us profile that fits better to the the back of this section here <clears throat> just so there's not as much pressure on it click all that into or screw it into place and it should sit without too much force I do apologize about the blurry video the, the camera's buggered keep on saying that it's like it is covered in dust and filler and fiberglass and I'm gonna get another one it's a DJI pocket Osmo pocket 2 so I'm gonna get the, the pocket 3 but yeah can't be going on like this but hopefully it's not too unbearable to to watch but I can see on my little screen here that things are a bit blurry sometimes not all the time but sometimes and looking back on the videos as well I can see it as well so We'll get that sorted for the next session out here. We've hit a monumental moment. Look at this. It's absolutely transformed the front of the car. get back here you can now see that the the bumper is now in line with the side skirt and we've got this huge chunky chunkiness it's chunky isn't it It's a bit hard to see because it's all different colours and that now and but absolutely buzzing. I've been looking forward to getting the the bumper. I really wasn't sure how it was gonna work and exactly what it was gonna do. I don't need to bring this out now. I was gonna extend that but I don't need to anymore because that's done it, that's gave it that extra chin that it needed. It just looks absolutely fantastic. That's how, that's how RS200s should have been built. That's how they should have looked. That's that's way better. Go this side because you can see it better from this side. It looks brilliant. And actually when you follow that line now, from there, that angle there takes you to there. It's 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 uh, it has got the right amount of protrusion for the following the front of the bonnet into there. Yeah. Obviously, we're just held together with tech screws um, in there, there, and there's a lot of strengthening up to do yet. But that's just it bolted into place. Yeah, it looks brilliant. Very, very happy with that. Yes, more filler, more fiberglass required, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing it in a very happy mood I think I'll be like yeah this is this is looking good 
Yeah, yeah. Still got to pull that middle bit out. Yeah, I still want to, still want to give it a bit more vintage at the front because it it only actually has that bit, yeah. and the number plate goes there. Yeah. I haven't even thought where the number plate's going to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean probably do a stick on one maybe. Maybe on there. Wow. Out of everything that we've done, that's transformed the car more than anything. The battery's gonna go flat. So, thanks for watching. Hope you like that. I'm buzzing with that. Thanks for pressing the buttons and everything, and uh, we'll see you next time. I'll be fiberglassing that bumper together. Hopefully with a new camera so shit's not blurry. Right, see you next time.